Hello YouTube. Welcome back from my stoop. How's it? It's a late uh, afternoon. I'm relaxing on my stoop. Had a terrible day at work. As usual lately. <laughs> But in any case, I'm continuing on my series of who am I slash what I believe in. And uh, I'm having a smoke in my body, Viking Plateau. Actually a very nice pipe. I haven't heard it until I bought it. Uh, and Old Dublin. The only, to, only old English or English blend tobacco that I can buy in South Africa. And while I'm still waiting for my orders, I will have to old old Dublin, which is not bad. It's actually very nice tobacco. Will uh, should uh, suffice. By the way, I don't know whether you've noticed, but uh, my stoop has been rearranged by my wife. Uh, maybe I can give you a quick... I, usually I sat there, round about there. <laughs> now I'm sitting here. So, yeah. <clears throat> we'll see how this, uh, how this change will, will work, but it seems to be okay. Before I continue on today's topic, uh, <clears throat> which is I believe in, Je in the coming of Jesus and the bringing of the kingdom of God, I just want to also put a disclaimer on. And the disclaimer is that um, I do not know everything. Well, no. <laughs> what's, what's that saying of Sherlock? Uh, I, I actually know very, very few, but that's not the point. The point is, I'm not trying to make a final statement on anything. If you've, if you've watched my first video on this, uh, I mentioned that I do believe that no one, no church, no single unity, entity, organization or whatever do have the final knowledge and truth on any subject because there's just so many factors that can play a role in why people think and do and act and uh, you know, so yeah there's just too many uh, too many diversity in creation in, in how God created us I mean just look at the, the the Bible writers and how they differed from each other so my I believe series is not to say that if you don't believe like this you are wrong not at all it's just how I see it and I might change and I might have have a different opinion tomorrow or next year or next week by the way a few comments on the previous two videos already changed my mind that I might consider you know modifying my opinion which is great because that to me is exactly how we you know enrich each other and and broaden the body of knowledge so, yeah, so I, I just wanted to, to stress that point for, for those who listen to my, who's watching this video maybe, but have not seen the others, so that you can just put into perspective that what I'm saying is, is what I do believe at this point in time of my life, of my journey. It might change, it did change over, over the years a lot, and it might change in future, but this is how I... Uh, interpreted my life events and everything and how I see things at this point in my life. So let me continue to I believe that Jesus brought the good news. Now to me good news is obviously good news. If news are not good anymore then 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 something's wrong. You know, and if our preaching and our word and our ministry and our message to the world and even to, to Christians are not good news in essence, 
Well, then actually we're missing the point um, because then something is wrong somewhere. Uh, and, I, and unfortunately, I must uh, confess that myself, when I was a young minister in, in a congregation, might have missed that point because my preaching was not always good news. To the contrary, it was often just you know bad news, just more moral laws and and things. So, so I do believe that we need to to proclaim the good news. Jesus came and said, I want to make you free. And I don't want to come and burden you with new stuff. I want to come and make you free. Um, so, and, and, and please, don't, I'm not saying that we should, uh, we should go to prosperity theology where, you know, claim it and frame it. That's not what I'm saying. Um, of, of course, there will be bad things in, in life. Actually, the Bible says there will be bad things in life. And uh, so that's part of that's part of the fact that we're not yet um, in, in you know in, in the in the final heaven or in the final dispensation. As long as we are here, there will be uh, bad things that happens to us. But if the church adds on to those bad things in in the word and the message that they proclaim, to put people more in in guilt and more in uh, in moral obligations, then and, and making their life not good news, but uh, that again, then then something to me is is not right. Um, and I mean that's exactly what Jesus also said to the Pharisees. If you know, he, he refuted the the Pharisees by saying, "You added onto the legalism and the moral guilt and things to people instead of of freeing them, instead of showing them the path and the way." you made their life actually more difficult. And that's what he came to and, com- and, and came to free us from. And I've, I'm busy reading Galatians uh, after I've read Romans r- recently. And it's a continuation of the same same theology. We, we Paul, and, and you should go and read it in three and f- uh, Galatians 3 and 4, 2, 3 and 4, where Paul says that the law is, is definitely not the way by which we are, we are saved or, you know, it is there to, 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 to be bad news in a certain sense because it's, it shows us the, the wrongdoings. But Jesus came to bring us the good news that he wants to free us and reconcile us with God, not through the right things. So, um, so I, I, I do confess that the church, our words, our practices, our preaching, um, in my opinion now, should never burden people more than that we're burdened already with the magnitude of your sin of life and brokenness. Um, so I believe that Jesus came to bring the kingdom of God to all creation. He did not come to begin a new religion or a new theology. Um, so therefore we are also not in competition with other theologies. We're not, we're not another one next to Jewism or, uh, you know, or Buddhism or any other theology. It, it, we're not a religion. We're not a theology. We are. It's a. It's the kingdom of God that He came to establish. So there's no competition. It's a new way of life. Um, so we are not in competition or in a constant battle against other theology, uh, theologies or, or religions. Um, we are here because we are agents of Jesus to establish the kingdom of God over all of creation, people, the creation itself, the world, uh, etc. Um, because all of us are in our broken people, everyone. There's not one unbroken person in on this world, and we're all broken. We all need reconciliation. We all need uh, Jesus to make our 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 burden lighter. Coupled to this, I also believe that we are saved by grace and grace alone. There's no extra. There should there there should never be an extra added as a requisite to be reconciled with God very very subtle subtle sometimes Um, I do sometimes get that that people come to me or that I hear churches say uh, yes of course Jesus is the only way of salvation but you should also do and then there's a range of the plus factor either tithing or baptism or the correct doing or more moral ethics or um, or you should align to this or that or the other there's different. There's re- really a vast 
uh, uh, diversity of what pluses people and and churches add on to then you are saved uh, and I believe that that is not the case uh, if I read the Bible correctly to me there's only one name on earth that was given to which mankind will be saved Acts 4 verses 12 and that is Jesus Christ not Jesus Christ plus you need to be a a this or a that or a do this or a do that or a etc so grace and grace alone and whenever we pose those kind of, of extra things and it happened in the Bible too um, that's also what, what Paul wrote to, to the Galatians when they said that why do you expect of the heathens to do Jewish, Jewish cultic um, religion practices if they are not Jews, they were never Jews is that not putting a burden on them for something that they never intended to, uh, to, have, to, have, uh, to have done so we do sometimes burden people by, by telling them that you can only be a Christian if you have Jesus Christ and you do the following. Then I think we are on the wrong, on the wrong path. Um, we need to accept and, and, and therefore we also are not allowed or should not judge other people who do not the things that we think or thought is supposed to be aligned with Christianity. We, although, although that is what you might think at the time, you can never ju judge another person for wh where he or she is in that position. That's how I see it, because we are all on a different stage in our journey with God. Some might be very far ahead, some might, be, might just have begun this, the, the journey with God. So I cannot expect everyone to be where I am, and no one should expect me to be where they are. We are all in a relationship with God and working on the things that we realize in our own lives which is not correct and which may improve our, our freedom and our joy. So to look at someone else and to say but because you do A, B and C you might not be as spiritually as I am, I believe that is, that is wrong. Um, because how can we say that? Uh, there's another person who, who might say the same to us at the same point because they might be further ahead in their life than we are. And again, the Bible said we are not, we should not judge other people um, because we are actually killing the grace of God. Paul himself prayed to God for something in his life which was to him a terrible thing, um, his thorn in his flesh, and God just kept on saying, I'm not going to take it away because my grace for you is enough. Now, someone might have looked at Paul and says, Ooh, because you do that, you, you are not as, as perfect or as whatever as I am. We can't do that. Um, we should allow the grace of God and the Spirit uh, to, to guide people who accepted Jesus Christ as their Savior to grow and to have this loving relationship with God and to grow in their own time. My three children are not on the same path stage not not only emotionally I mean age wise they're not on the same I, and I cannot treat them the same and, and if I try to do that it is often I find myself in a, in a tight spot because they are not on the same stage not physically not emotionally not age wise and and that is the relationship it's it there's a difference in, in in the way I treat even my kids and sometimes the one will tell me, yes, but you do that to the other one, and, I'm, and I keep on reminding them, but you are not them, and you are not there uh, in your life. So, so I, I, I believe really that, that, that my relationship with God is not a religion, it's a relationship. And in that relationship, I work on things which I know is not pleasing to God. But what someone else will do, and where they are in their relationship, I have no say to say, and, uh, and I cannot judge that. So, so to, to end off this video then today, um, I believe that Jesus came to this earth to bring and establish the kingdom of God and to bring good news. If we proclaim a guilty, moral, legalist, bad news to people, we are missing the point. And to or expect people to add on to Jesus plus baptism uh, 
whatever we want to add on tithing money um, then I think we've also um, adding something on which the Bible itself doesn't do so um, we are saved by grace we all who has accepted this truth are on a pilgrimage with God and we are emerging and reforming as we grow and, and, and go along on this road. So friends, on that note, that is what I believe in terms of the coming of Jesus Christ to this world, that He came to bring the good news, to establish the, the uh, Kingdom of God. And next week I'm going to tackle a topic which some might not agree with me, but that is on reconciliation. No, most will agree with me, but in any case. Uh, thank you for watching, and, uh, and please again comment, join the discussion. I've already made changes in what I believe and what I think due to your, your uh, comments, so it, it is good. Um, that is how we, how we increase and, and, and our understanding of, uh, of, of what it all is about. So. Uh, On that very nice positive note and the positive note is lighting my pipe again <laughs> you know what old uh, old Dublin has got a very distinct taste but let me let me not continue because this is not about a, a tobacco review but just to remind you that old Dublin has got a very distinct uh, sweetness extra something uh, which is a is a, a, a Syrian or a, or a Balkan Mediterranean tobacco that's been added there but I do know what it is but I'll, I'll have to go and read up and, and I'll share that with you later but it's very nice uh, it's very satisfying now thank you for watching subscribe if you like Come back for the follow-ups and uh, enjoy your day. Well, actually, it's quite close to night. Enjoy your night. Bye-bye.